Yes, sir. We'll start. Uh, I think we can proceed. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. So shall we start? Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, Amandi, ma'am. Hello. Let's start. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. So I am Amandi Kaur, executive member and chairperson of Cultural and Education Committee on behalf of. Of Nursing Scholars Society Haryana, I feel delightful to offer a gracious welcome to all of you in today's webinar on shared drug facts to save lives. It's a fortunate day today. We are celebrating the first year foundation day of Jasmine Chapter 4 in NSS Haryana. And in a three days event, starting from yesterday, we had on 27 June, where we tried to do our little bit to save planet Earth and nurturing the nature by plantation drive. And today on 28th, we are organizing this webinar on International Day on Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. And tomorrow on 29th, we will be organizing a blood donation camp in collaboration with RPIIMS Karnal Haryana. So it's my honor and privilege to start and host this webinar. And uh, I wholeheartedly thank all of you for sparing your valuable time and gracing this occasion. I would like to invite the president of NSS Haryana, Mr. Surendra Sharma, sir, to welcome our chief guest, speaker, and the participants. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Very warm greeting to all the participants and audience here for this webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. And I am uh, more than grateful to welcome you all to this webinar on International Day Against the Drug Abuse and Illicit Traffic. First of all, I heartfully thank and welcome to our NSS patron, Dr. Suresh Narulakhanna Mems, and our NSS president, Dr. Binu Joseph, for their presence. And uh, Madam, sir, it's not joined today because it's midnight there. And I would like to welcome our scholars, Nursing Scholar Society chapter presidents, and all the, our NSS senior leaders, and executive committee members and participants who are present here in today's webinar. Today, we are uh, here celebrating the first foundation day of Nursing Scholar Society, Jasmine Chapter 4, Haryana. In this, we are planned three day events. So, already Aman Madam explains. So, first day, yesterday, we are celebrating as a plantation day. And therefore, that I feel happy to share that we are received very good response from the uh, our faculty and nursing students, they are planted so many plants in different, different area and community. And day two, today we are organizing the webinars on International Day against the drug abuse and illicit traffic. And uh, Dr. Muttu, Vankusel, uh, Sir Srinivasan Sir is with us today for highlighting us with their knowledge. And tomorrow we are organizing the blood donation camp with the collaboration of RPIT Karna and share their the, the RPIT if they are organizing the blood donation and uh, we are the top, uh, we are the partner there. And today we are on the second day of the event. And for that, I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Muthu Venkat Kalam, sir, 
Srinivasan sir, sir is incredible human beings and a well-known personality in nursing fields, especially in our young nurses, because I can say the most of our students and nurses prefer the books, the book, target high books, and uh, today Muttu sir with us and with the sir here, here to share the knowledge and experience of today topic that is drug abuse and illicit trafficking with, the, with this year theme also. So I would like, uh, so I would like to uh, welcome to our today's speaker, Dr. Murthy Vakti, sir. And I would like to thanks to our NSS pattern, Dr. Suresh Narula Karnam, ma'am, and our NSS president, Dr. Binu Jo, sir, who are concerns for the nursing care and nursing standards with the main objectives of the society is care of caregivers. So we all are thankful for giving the opportunity to us and support us from last one years. And uh, I would like to welcome and congratulate, congratulate to all our NSS Jasmine Chapter 4, Haryana Executive Committee members and uh, member general members for completing the chapter one year for organizing this event and continued support from each of us. Thank you, thank you very much, and very warm welcome to all who are present here. Thank you. Thank you, Manu. And continue. I'm audible? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for your lovely welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, I would like to invite the National President of Nursing Scholar Society India, Dr. Binu Joy, sir, to kindly unfold the theme. Thank you. Respected Surinder, sir. President Haryana Chapter, Jasmine Nurse Scholar Society, Dr. Mutu Venkat Chalam, sir, Naveen, sir, Amandeep, ma'am, Ram Lakhan, sir, dear delegates and young budding nurses, a warm namaste and greetings of the day. Yes, really, it is a very proud moment. Foundation Day Ceremony. Yes, Jasmine Chapter's foundation is very strong. They have completed one year, the whole one year, really the whole team has worked. Really they have done a marvelous job during the last one year. From the bottom of all the founder members of the Nursing Scholar Society, we thank each members for making this happen and promoting the growth of Nursing Scholar Society with the main vision and mission of the Nursing Scholar Society. I'm also very much thankful to all the members for organizing a webinar to mark the International Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking Day. Yes, we need to make mark all this. We need to mark the international days to educate the general public on the issues of the drug abuse, to mobilize the political resources to fight against the drug abuse, and to gather the various issues and addresses to address the global concern of drug abuse. The International Day of Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking is usually marked on June 26th every year. And the main goal of this is to make the world free of drug abuse. And this year theme is very correctly that addressing the drug challenges in health and women issues, health and women crisis is really a time. So this is the main theme of today's webinar, addressing the drug challenges in health and women crisis. So I will not talk much on this regard. Yes, because a great renowned personality in the nursing circles of India, Dr. Muthu Venkat Chalam Sar is there. So I will not talk much. It is a blessing to be with, to listen to you, sir. So I'm very thankful to Muthu Venkat Chalam Sar for accepting our invitation to be the speaker for the webinar. Thank you all and thank you especially the, the members of Haryana chapter for making this event a very mark and conducting three days event. You have done a marvelous plantation day. Now today you are going with webinar and tomorrow you will be done with blood donation day. Really hats off to you all for making the field, society feel proud. Thank you for providing me an opportunity to talk on this day. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for percolating your ideas among the participants. 
So without wasting much time, I would like to invite the today's speaker of the webinar, Dr. Muthu Venkatel, uh, Venkat, Venkat, Venkat Chalam sir. Sorry, I, I would like to share the screen. Okay, can I share the screen? Yes. Uh, it is saying that I have to stop other screen sharing. Okay, sir is sharing, I think. That's what it is saying. Once again, I'll stop and start again. So, are you able to see the screen now? Sir, I, uh, yes, sir. I would like to share my screen first, then share your screen. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Fine. Yes. Just one correction. Okay. I'm not associate professor. I'm an assistant professor. That is a type of... <laughs> Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, uh, it's as sir said, Binu sir said, as Surinda sir said, uh, Smuthu sir is a well-known personality among young budding nurses and we are really proud and honored to have you, sir, in today's webinar. And as sir said, he's too humble to say that he's assistant professor, so it's my mistake, sorry. So, uh, sir is assistant professor in Department of Psychiatric Nursing at Institute of Human Behavior and Allied Sciences, Dilshad Garden, Delhi. And uh, as you can see, the sir has done PhD and BS in nursing from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences and master's in psychiatric nursing from Ames, New Delhi. Sir has also done a diploma in pharmacy from SPCP Tamil Nadu and has also attended IRON program from Perth Campus Australia. And currently, sir is pursuing a fellowship from Mahef FAIMR. And uh, sir has more than 10 years of teaching experience in various reputed institutes. And he, uh, he has also uh, written 17 research articles, including and three textbooks, and which includes the India's best-selling Target High. And I hope everyone knows the name of this book because many nurses, not only the young nurses, and even everyone is following that book. Yes. And he has a particular research interest in the areas like aggression management, elder abuse, and substance abuse use disorders. And sir has also uh, re received Sarla Kapoor Award for Best Research Paper in ISPN Conference. And he has also received grant from ICMR and a sponsorship for six international conference on workplace violence in Toronto, Canada. And sir is also deputy editor in Indian Journal of Psychiatric Nursing and reviewer in Journal of Psychiatric Nursing. And all, apart from this, sir is member of various uh, nursing bodies. And he has also organized many conferences as organizing secretary. So I really welcome you, sir. And to please uh, enlighten our young nurses and all the participants with your topic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now you can share your screen. Yes, sir. A wonderful, a nice uh, introduction on me. Uh, okay, now I share my screen. Uh, yes, are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, first of all, uh, I thank the organization, as, uh, you know, so Nursing Scholar Society uh, uh, and its Haryana chapter, the president. Uh, uh, Dr. Surendra Sharma, Dr. Bino Joy, who is chief guest today, and uh, uh, Amandeep Kaur. So, am I spelled your name correct? Amandeep Kaur? Right. I hope so. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I'm so sorry. <laughs> right. uh, and uh, my name is uh, very difficult to pronounce. I, 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 that's that's I the reason. Difficulty so, we are very, we are very, uh, in usually we are calling you Muthu, sir. Muthu, sir. We are not used to call you. <laughs> very lengthy first name. So, usually it is uh, difficult to uh, pronounce. It's fine. Uh, so today, uh, first of all, I thank this nursing, uh, sorry, uh, nursing scholar society, and uh, congratulate on your uh, anniversary today. And uh, also very happy to know that you are engaging some activities, uh, uh, you know, 
to serve the public either it is an awareness program uh, like today or uh, the blood donation program which you are going to conduct tomorrow and the yesterday one about uh, the environment uh, to say uh, plants and trees all of the, all those things are kind of uh, uh, you know uh, saving humankind in different aspects whether it is knowledge awareness and attitude and uh, you, you are uh, you know uh, i think you have you are going in a very right direction uh, that being your first anniversary uh, and uh, i congratulate for many more such events in future not just in anniversary you can conduct many more uh, i hope so coming back to the topic today uh, the sh share drug facts to save lives actually this was the theme of the last year uh, international day against drug abuse just one second yes. hello yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I'm on a meeting with all the Sorry for the interruption. I'm in mean, office so that <laughs> there is a call. Uh, yeah, coming back to that. Uh, uh, share drug facts to save life. It was a theme in the uh, last year, International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. I will throw some light on this. And uh, as a nurse, we have a lot of responsibility to educate public. Whenever we talk about nurses and their responsibilities in the nursing management, the teaching of the patient as well as their family members on uh, in as a community health nurse, teaching the public about uh, even we take about diseases, about prevention, early screening, treatment, rehabilitation, from prevention till a tertiary care, we have a lot of responsibility in educating the mass, the patient, the family members, and the public, those who are healthy also in, 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 in terms of primordial prevention. So in this regard, a sad, this responsibility of sad drug facts to save lives, we are actually a frontline workers to carry this to the public, making the public aware about the ill effects of drugs and the myths of the drugs to you know uh, create awareness so that we reduce the supply. It, it, so a demand, it, it is a demand reduction. You know, you all know that in, in uh, substance abuse treatment, we follow harm minimization, uh, you know, strategies, harm minimization strategies in that three approach. One is harm reduction, risk reduction, and sub, su sorry, supply reduction, harm reduction, and demand reduction. So if we educate the public, that will reduce the demand. Supply reduction, of course, it's a legal thing controlling the supply, but the demand will be reduced if the public are aware that they should not take uh, this drug. So in these aspects, I will cover today uh, what is a sad drug facts to save lives. I will throw some light on that. And also I will address addressing a drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis, which is the theme of this current year. So how do we go about it? How to, uh, what is the, um, you know, what is, uh, what is all about this theme? Addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis. So you all know that the crisis, the term crisis is always linked to substance abuse. If someone is in crisis, the first thing they adopt is, you know, the uh, yeah, one, one of the more adaptive, uh, coping strategy what they use is go for drug or you, you know very simple term uh, is alcohol alcohol is their best friend when they are in crisis because uh, that that leads to uninhibited socialization and they feel light and they feel ventilated when they take drugs that it may be a myth it may have a lot of long-term consequences but that that comes to their immediate rescue so that's why the term uh, crisis is always connected to uh, some uh, triggering factor for sub, uh, substance use or uh, abuse. So let us move on to the topic. Also, and uh, also one more thing I would like to say, uh, whenever we talk about this International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, they, their focus is mostly on illicit drugs. Even in the drug abuse also, their focus is mainly on illicit drugs. I hope all of you know the differences between illicit and licit uh, drugs. Just uh, I'll throw a little bit light on that. Uh, all the licit drugs are actually licensed to sell. Of course, there are restrictions. There are restrictions to sell uh, in terms of age to whom you can sell, uh, the place where you can sell, and the timing in which you can sell, and uh, the customs duty, exercise duty. There are a lot of regulations governing that, but still, 
it is legalized to sell. For example, tobacco, alcohol. These two are illicit drugs unless the government bans. For example, in Bihar, if you consume alcohol, it is it is considered to be illegal. But if you consume in Delhi, it is not illegal. So because in Bihar, government it complete a ban on liquor. So that's why it is illegal. So the rules uh, there is a law regulates selling of these drugs. But illicit drugs are like cocaine, cocaine. Uh, 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 you know, <laughs> cannabis. All uh, I think some of your mic is on. Uh, so please unmute that. Uh, some of your mic is uh, unmuted. Please mute. Yeah. Uh, so the illicit drug includes what I said. Uh, opium. There are a lot of opium drugs: morphine, codeine, heroin, all those things. Uh, cannabinoids. Then oh, amphetamines, uh, LSDs, hallucinogens, and also prescribing medic uh, you know uh, prescribing medic prescribed medication, but not for medical use. They abuse the even the prescribed prescribed medication. For example, a patient comes for a uh, OPI treatment has to be uh, if, if he has a long time history, he has to be uh, prescribed with a opioid agonist. That means it act like opioid. For example buprenorphine or morphine, sorry, uh, methadone, even morphine, but mostly methadone or buprenorphine. These drugs are act like opioid, but known purity and the more known quantity. So the person who is uh, using opioid, they, 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 he will cease to take those medication, which is, you know, illicit, uh, unknown quality and unknown quantity, purity, uh, purity also we don't know and we don't know the exact quantity in which he is taking because it is mostly adulterated. So they will be replaced, a replacement therapy during withdrawal phase, they will be given opioid agonist, something which acts like opioid because the patient who has long history of opioid, you cannot stop it. There will be a lot of withdrawal symptoms. So to control that, we have to start with the agonist therapy. So sometimes the agonist therapy, the drug, when it's, it is uh, dispensed to the patient, they themselves will abuse that drug. Or when they uh, procure drug for one purpose, they will use it for other purpose. So uh, that is how even the prescribed drugs can be misused. Okay. So mostly this International Day uh, Against Drug Abuse, uh, and that is by, uh, you know, it is in, uh, first of all, in 7th December 1987, the General Assembly decided to observe 26th June every year as the International Day Against Drug Abuse and illicit trafficking or otherwise known as world drug day it is usually by it is it is by un united nations office for drug and crime so they are the one who is observing this day every year it is to strengthen action and cooperation in achieving a world free of drug abuse and each year individuals like you myself entire communities various organizations all over the world join into observe world health uh, sorry world drug day to help raise awareness of major problem that is drugs post to society even uh, on sunday this is exactly on 26 june we also conducted a marathon uh walkathon not marathon walkathon to create awareness among public regarding the drug abuse Together, we can tackle the world drug problem. And again, I point out this point. Usually, this Indian OTC concentrates more on focuses on uh, illicit drugs. But in India, even the illicit drugs uh, like alcohol also pose a large social problem, social uh, problem, because whenever one person consumes an alcohol, so, uh, later I will come up with the statistics exactly, uh, approximately 2.8 crore, 2.8 crore. Uh, uh, people uses alcohol in the country, dependent use. I am talking about dependent use. But 2.8 crore person means that means 2.8 crore families are affected. You convert in an average number of three members in a family, three to four. Okay, let us take three. If, uh, um, you know, uh, when we are taking average of married and unmarried, unmarried persons, maybe smaller to larger, three to four in a family. So 2.8 crore multiplying to three in, or four nearly, three between three and four, it is 10 crore members, 10 crore population is affected by this alcoholism alone. I'm, talk about, I'm not talking about opioid, which has more serious consequences than alcohol, especially in the northern part of the country. 
Whereas in certain part of country, the alcoholism is more, uh, or the, the use of opioid is less. I will come up with those statistics. Uh, it, it is not about the objective of this session. It is the objective of this celebrating this day, uh, you know, World Drug Day or International uh, Day against the uh, drug abuse as well as the uh, illicit trafficking to achieve the goal of a world free of drug abuse and to raise awareness of major problem that illicit drugs represent to our society. I, I, I already introduced about the UNODC, United Nations Office for Drug and Crime, um, has been helping in make the world safer from drugs, organized crime, corruption, and terrorism. Why these four things? Why corruption also come into the picture? Why terrorism also come into the picture? These are all four are very well associated. These are kind of interlinked. If uh, the drug use is always are the drug, the drug use is associated with organized crime in terms of trafficking, in terms of uh, selling it or uh, you know selling it to the uh, target group as well as uh, you know processing and procuring. That's what I talk about. It, all together we collected the policies about uh, trafficking. Uh, then also the consumers also uh, the rate of crime among those who are uh, drug addicts is higher than the uh, general population. So that means these two are very well connected and also it leads to uh, corruption. Corruption in the sense uh, without uh, corruption or, uh, you know, corruption happens in terms of, again, I say, uh, in, in trafficking, mainly in trafficking. Then terrorism, why terrorism is connected here? Uh, the, most of the terrorism groups rise fund through trafficking of these opioids. So you know that uh, which country produce more opium in the world? Anyone? Anyone of you? Which country produce more opium in the world? Politically unstable, undemocratic. Even recently, that country have uh, you know have been under control of Taliban. 86 percentage, you know, not less, close to 90 percent. 86 percent of old. Iraq. Yeah, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. 86 percentage of total opium production comes from this country alone. Unfortunately, we are very, very, very close to the country and we fall in the golden triangle that this drug is usually trafficked through, uh, you know, uh, Afghanistan, then Pakistan, then comes to India and uh, Burma. And from there, it uh, travels throughout the world. Uh, when we talk about cocaine, then it is South America, South American countries like Colombia, Brazil, Chile, all those South American countries where cocoa plants, cocoa boost they call, these are a, a popular for trafficking. Whereas comes to opium, 86% of production is from Afghanistan alone. When that country is ruled by undemocratic uh, group, inch group, then that, that poses that post more risk in the world uh, to the world in terms of controlling these. Some of the latest data I will be sharing in next five, 10, uh, eight to 10 slides. In 2020, one in 18 people in, in the world, one in 18 people aged between 15 to 64 years worldwide, an estimated 284 million people, that is 5.6 percentage of the population had used a drug in the past 12 months. That's a staggering number 28 to 284, it is 28.4 in, uh, sorry, 28.4 crore population. The number of people who used drugs in 2020 was 26% higher than in 2010, partly because of world population growth. Because 26% uh, higher the number, it is not proportional. The number of people who used drugs in last 12 months rise by 26% in one decade. That is 10 years between 2010 and 20 it is not alone. It is, you cannot just say this number of uh, drug users have increased. Also, the population also increases, but not to 26 percentage. The population rises by 10 percent. Rest of the uh, 15 to 16 percent has to be attributed to the, uh, you know, increase in uh, drug usage, especially among youngsters. These are some global estimates of the numbers of drug users in million. Like in world, in India also, the cannabis is very high next to alcohol. Uh, the cannabis, 209 million worldwide cannabis users and OPI 61 million 
amphetamines now it is emerging actually the use of amphetamines in the last one decade is been increasing and it, uh, unfortunately even in india also the amphetamine uh, use is proportionally very high compared to western world and then comes to cocaine which is 21 million uh, and ecstasy hallucinogen lsd all those things is again 20 million these are the common uh, drugs that, see here we are not talking about usually the world data th this is the data from World uh, Drug World, a World Drug Report by UNODC, but uh, they usually, uh, you know, uh, research and uh, they, uh, their uh, focus is on illicit drugs. That's why the data about Indian data, I will come up with even with alcohol because in India, uh, al alcohol also poses a lot of societal uh, issues and problems. Distribution of uses of selected drugs uh, by sex. Usually, our perception is that there are more. <laughs> Some of your mic is on. Can you please? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, when it comes to uh, drug use, the, uh, the general person <laughs> that uh, men are the users and the women do not use. Or, okay, some of your mic, please, please. Some of your mic is uh, on and off. Please control. Uh, the fast can, you know, you can control. Uh, no, no. I request all the participants to kindly mute the mics. So, it causes disturbance and echoing. Please, uh, otherwise the host is requested to mute all the mics. And, uh, okay, fine, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will do that. So when it comes to opiates, you see 85% of the opiate users are male and 15% is uh, uh, women. And as I move towards right side, the proportion of female keep increasing. And comes to cocaine, 27% is women. When it comes to cannabis, 30%. It's world data, not India data. And uh, new psychoactive substances, 30%. Ecstasy type, 38%. Non-medical use of pharmaceutical stimulant. You see almost equal, 45%. Both amphetamines as well as non-medical use of pharmaceutical stimulant. That says an important message that if it is available, see, the non-medical use of pharmaceutical stimulants like in in in. Uh, in in countries like in India, it's easy to get over the counter or through, uh, uh, you know, the procurement is somewhat easy than uh, some of the Western countries where have a very stringent laws against these things. So there you see the usage among women is much higher, close to men. If you come to non-medical use of sedative and tranquilizers, it is neck to neck, 51 to 49 percentage. Okay. So more than 11 million people inject drugs. Among these numbers, what we talk about 200, and, uh, 200 plus million of drug users, 11 million people, that is uh, roughly uh, well, less, a little less than 5% of the first five percentage of all drug users are injectables, you know, use injectable drugs. So that is 11.2 million, that is more than one, or it is, sorry, 11.2 million means 10 million is one crore, more than a crore population uses injectables this are because injectable drug again causes other health consequences apart from the consequences from the drug they also faces you know uh, risk of hepatitis c hepatitis b as well as hiv uh, so these risk also adds and that adds burden to the uh, country's health status right 5.5 million people who inject drugs are living with hepatitis c see Okay, as soon as I, I discuss about the point, you see 5 point failure, that is roughly half of the population who inject drugs have hepatitis C. 1.4 million, that is one tenth of, one tenth, one in eight, not even one tenth, one in eight of them are living with HIV. And one in 10 people were living with hepatitis, HIV and hepatitis, two of them. So that's so that says, uh, you know, a lot of, lots about, what is the consequences of injectables? So at least 50% of the uh, people who use injectable drugs having hepatitis C or HIV are both. Coming to the cocaine manufacture and trafficking, I said already the cocaine manufacture is largely concentrated in South American countries. America is not one, please understand. America is one country in North India. So South American countries includes Mexico, sorry, even Mexico falls in North, in North American country, but South of North American country, usually Peru, Colombia, Chile, uh, all these countries are usually, you know, engaged in this cocaine uh, cultivation, cocaine bushes. Okay. Uh, the global cultivation in 2020 is 
two lakh thirty four thousand and two hundred hectares of cocaine cultivation has happened. And uh, if if you just you can't understand what is two thousand two lakh thirty four thousand two hundred hectares. You can clearly imagine that is three lakh twenty eight thousand and eleven, or roughly say three and three point two five lakhs times of football ground. If you add up three point two five lakhs of football ground, how much area you will get? That much in that much area, cocaine is planted every year. Uh, it was in two thousand twenty. The global production in pure form one thousand nine hundred and eighty two tons. 1982 uh, tons of cocaine is produced in a year and the global seizure in uh, in varying purity in varying places like harbor airport in different places 1424 tons are being seized in 2020 1982 tons are produced in pure pure form and 1424 tons were seized so you may immediately possess a question said that means only 500 tons of cocaine is available for the users. Rest is seized. It is not the case because that 1,982 tons are pure form of cocaine. Okay, and whereas this is 1,982 is pure form cocaine. Here it is in varying degree of uh, purity. It may be sometimes adulterated. You, you cannot say it is exactly 1,424. Can equal to the pure cocaine. So uh, you have to, you know, uh, interpret this data with concern, uh, with with caution. So, uh, but in 2020 there was 4.5 percentage uh, more seizures than uh, the previous year. Uh, global number of users is uh, 21 million for this drug. This is one map you can easily identify. Uh, on the left, I have uh, shown. You see, cocaine is in blue color. a uh, blue or somewhat blue or green color this one then in violet color opioids and opiates and in orange color uh, amphetamine type stimulants and in yellow color hiv among people who inject drugs this shows clearly which drug is in what area as i said said uh, entire all the, see uh, see south american countries all the south american countries cocaine production and trafficking even the mexico which i told you it is actually situated in south of north america north american country uh, because uh, above panama canal it is north north america but still even there is a trafficking only the america they, they have but when comes to uh, cocaine sorry sorry uh, cocaine use and production see south american countries uh, dominates and opiates use if you come to opiates use and mostly you see india sir you are muted sir Sorry. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, now we are able to do this. Right. So when was it muted? Just now. Just now. Yeah. Okay. Just now. Okay. So this map shows what drugs is more used in which area. You can see South American and uh, some uh, some North American country, South of North American country, some part of Australia. in uh, some part of south um, african countries there are more of cocaine use also in europe but when comes to india the cocaine use is very very less because it's very costly as well as uh, uh, and the procurement also a difficult thing but when comes to india afghanistan uh, bangladesh and for some part of china in africa you can see more of opioid uses and the amphetamine use also in india you can see the meth 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 amphetamine amphetamine use also now getting more uh, you know uh, in the last decade it has shown a phenomenal increase in users of amphetamine type stimulants in india right i move on to the drug by uh, drug in brief little bit i am just talking a little bit about the illicit drugs i will uh, spoke i will speak about only alcohol about the uh, indian data later point in time uh, first of all coming to cannabis cannabis remains by far the world's most used drug because it easy availability uh, you know uh, during holi our people use uh, what do you call that um, what do you call that i forgot the name of this bomb 
something uh, it is easily available locally available cannabis in different form in different concentration of course the purest form gives more more of ecstasy elation and leads to dependence but uh, widely it is available and i was working in uttarakhand uh, when i walk on the road i can see uh, cannabis even cannabis on street you can uh, people make even chutneys with this but th that does not have that much of concentration right? it is uh, in different forms it is being used uh, an estimated 2209 million people used cannabis in 2020 representing 4% of the global population they are staggering 4% of the global population using cannabis the number of people who use cannabis has increased by 23% over the past decade in the last decade Overall increase was 26 percentage, but cannabis use is increased by 23 percentage. Periods of lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic drove increases in the use of cannabis in terms of both amounts used and the frequency used in 2020. So the, the COVID-19 pandemic led to you know increase in uh, surge in use use of cannabis. Cannabis accounts for substantial share of global drug-related harm, owing in part to its high prevalence rates, <coughs> mainly. Um, it is not as harmful, it is harmful definitely, but it's not as harmful as opioid in terms of health consequences, but still it will lead, lead to harm because of moving to its more high, uh, prevalence, high prevalence rate. And coming to opioids, an estimated 61 million people used opioids in 2020. This number may be underrepresenting the many of the country may not have the good reporting system so this man numbers may be misleading even the numbers may be more not definitely not less half of them resided in south africa south asia and south west asia of these an estimated 31 million people used opiates mainly heroin the level of opioid use remained stable in 20 it is not increased from the previous year the estimated number of people who used opioids in 2020 was a double that of 2010 but from the 2010, 50% increase, sorry, 100% increase. That means the availability or usage has increased 100 percentage, doubled from 2010 to 2020, owing partly to improve data from countries with large population. Again, it may be attributed to that number may not have increased in real in realistically. The number may not have increased, it may be the same or maybe a little bit increased, but the reporting system may have improved. Many of the countries may have come into the uh, you know, network of reporting so that we get more numbers. So it may be from 30 million to 60 million over 10, uh, 10 years. That means more countries started reporting about their uh, opioid use. Okay, about 40% of all people in drug treatment in 2020 cited opioid as their primary drug of use. You see, that means the health consequences are very high. The health illness related to cocaine is very high compared to other drugs. For about 40% of the people who is taking drug treatment, uh, uh, who is in drug treatment, uh, treatment are, uh, they attributed their ill health to the opioid use. Opioids remains the most lethal group of drugs accounting for two thirds of deaths related directly to drugs. So two third of drug related death is due to opioid. That says a lot about how harmful the opioid use is. Coming to the cocaine, an estimated 21.5 million people used cocaine in 2020, representing 0.4% of the global population. North America and Europe remain the two main consumer production more in South America. North America is the consumer. North America and Europe remain the two main consumer markets for cocaine because it's costly drug. And uh, the demand in Africa and Asia has risen over the past two decades, but a regional demand remains uneven and lack of data prevents a clear understanding of the level of use. Coming to the amphetamine type stimulants. An estimated 34 million people used amphetamines in 2020, uh, representing 0.7% of global population. Qualitative assessments suggest an increase in the use of amphetamines in 2020. While the prevalence of use is highest in North America, the largest number of users of amphetamines are found in East and, East and Southeast Asia. Women represent almost one in two ATS users but only one in five people in treatment for ATS disorder. This is very, you know, this is a cause of concern for us. 
one in two, that means 50% of ATS, amphetamine type stimulant users are women, but only one in five people in treatment are women. That means the men, see, treatment seeking among men for drug related issues in ATS users is very high and that among women it is very less because almost equal number of people are using this ATS, but one among five people admitted for treatment is, uh, sorry, one among five uh, being treated for the drug is only woman. So this says that among women, maybe a stigma, maybe uh, uh, other issues, which leads to less treatment seeking among women. That is a definitely a, um, a worrying factor. New psychoactive substances, NPS. The level of use of NPS is lower than that of drugs under international control. Uh, because uh, the, the drugs under international controls are, you know, the, the trafficking is very much controlled here. It is all prescribed drugs, so it's very easy to carry by anyone. But it's all about how to use, whether you use it for your uh, the, the, for therapeutic purpose or whether you are using it deliberately for the uh, uh, as a drug. NPS were consumed in most countries in 2020. The most frequently used NPS are synthetic cannabinoid receptor agonist. That is synthetic cannabinoids and also ketamine that you widely, you, you all know that how ketamine is being uh, uh, used as a drug. Use of NPS may be decreasing in North America and Europe, but Eastern Europe, Asia and possibly Africa are likely experiencing midterm increases in use. Many users of NPS use them unknowingly, consuming the substances as adulterants of other drugs, sometimes with fatal consequences. Now I turn towards India regarding our some of the recent data. The most recent data is authentic data. There are a lot of surveys which is done at a very small scale and published, but the large scale study, which is very authentic, published by uh, the, you know, uh, commissioned by Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment, uh, Government of India in 2019. The study was conducted by National Drug Dependence and Treatment Center, NDDTC, <coughs> by AIMS. That is uh, NDTC is in Ghaziabad, which is managed by AIMS. So the Department of Psychiatric Nursing and NDTC together conducted the study. The principal investigator was Dr. Atul Ampikar, is well known in the you know, you know this um, uh, de addiction treatment uh, in the country. So he was the principal investigator, conducted the study and published in 2019. Two lakh and 111 households were surveyed and which is from 186 districts of the country, a total of 4,73,569 individuals were assessed for drug use. What was the outcome? The alcohol use in India is 16 crore users, 5.7 crore. See, all, all who use alcohol are problematic. You see, there are three levels. First of all, habitual users, so the 16 crore, total of 16 crore users out of which 5.7 crore are a problem users. That is where the problem starts. Then 2.9 crore dependent users. This is what the problem for us. Uh, it's not a problem for us. There is a responsibility for us to, uh, you know, either to prevent or uh, minimize the health consequences and to treat them. So 2.9 crore dependent users, the male female ratio also given the very, very minimal number of uh, female users, maybe it is uh, uh, assumed that there is no underreporting about it because a uh, woman is usually do not disclose the fact when we interview uh, the people, because usually it is the self-reporting, that is a limitation self-reporting. When I ask a male and there is a 80% chance he will tell the truth that uh, he may use, but there may be, uh, I'm not sure, but there may be a hesitation for a woman to discuss that I'm consuming an alcohol, alcohol. Uh, I, I'm an alcoholic. So provided there is no underreporting, this data is uh, right. So 2.9 crore independent users in alcohol. When it comes to cannabis, 3.1 crore users out of which 72 lakh <coughs> problem users and 25 lakh dependent users. That says the volume about the burden. 25 lakh dependent users in Canada who request a treatment uh, that is uh, in the country is definitely it's a burden for the uh, government. Usually, you know, mental settings are uh, 
uh, public health settings. All the, almost all the mental health settings are, almost all, not all, but almost all the mental health settings are uh, run by government and it is a huge burden on the government and uh, responsibility on the government to treat these patients. Coming to opioid use in India, 2.3 crore users out of them, 77 lakh problem users and 28 lakh dependent users. Okay. And in that, uh, there is another, uh, you know, uh, categorization given opium, 11 lakh, heroin, 63 lakh, and pharma, pharma opioids is nothing but prescribed drug like morphine, methadone, buprenorphine, all these drugs are prescribed for other purpose, but that is being misused. Coming to inhalant use, uh, 77 lakh users, 22 lakh problem users, and 8.5 lakh dependent users. One unique factor about this inhalant use is more number of children. You can see here one third of total users are children. Out of 77 lakh users, 26 lakh users, that is one in three. One in three. One out of three user is a child. I even personally have seen a lot of children who were treat, being treated for this. Uh, you know, inhale and use in India. Usually, slum dwellers, those who you know, usually beg on this uh, traffic signals. That's why you are discouraged to you know uh, give alms uh, when the children are begging in the street light. The moment they collect twenty rupees, they go to the nearest stationery shop and purchase an ink remover, which is usually ten rupees. But for these people, they sell it for twenty rupees. Even they earn more money the moment the children are purchasing that but they know the purpose too that these children will purchase that and they pour them into the polythene paper and they they you know they inhale it with high dose and they get into you know kind of uh, elation and ecstasy i have seen personally many cases like this and a lot of ngos are working on this to prevent it's mainly among uh, the lower socioeconomic group uh, children uh, and all uh, like petrol thinner uh, or the ink remover things are used for this inhalation. Uh, coming to the prevalence of current alcohol use in different population groups. So to in total population, it is 14.6 percentage. In males, it is 27.3 percentage. Among female, it is 1.6 percentage. Among children, children means 10 to 17 years. That is again alarming signal. <coughs> 1.3 is not a less number among children. Among children, 1.3 percentage alcohol use that is school going 10 to 17 years that is that means they are not even completed their uh, school uh, they haven't completed plus two so that is an alarming number uh, provided if it is an under reporting the real picture may be a little more than this and it is an emerging area which needs a lot of attention from the policy makers as well as nurses like us, school health nursing, uh, school health program also. Uh, we have to take care to, uh, you know, uh, make aware the parents uh, for the warning, signal, warning sign as well as we have to educate the children about the consequences of these drug use. And uh, coming to the adults about 18 years, it is 17.1 percentage. Uh, again, uh, coming to the prevalence of current cannabis, cannabis use in different population group, uh, it is usually again like alcohol, males are more and females are less, but again uh, uh, children, but not as much as in alcohol, but again all, here also it's a number of it's alarming, 5% out of this 0.49%, close to 1% children is again definitely not a small number. Uh, adults above 18 years, 3.3%, that is again close to one, one, one third of it by children. And uh, uh, cannabis products prevalence of current use is different, like cannabis, bong, and ganja. So, you know, usually cannabis overall is, you know, very high, and the bong is, bongs comes next, and, uh, uh, and the least used is ganja. Here also the current use and problem used are uh, showed in different color. <coughs> Coming to the OPI use in different population groups, uh, you see uh, males 4 percentage, overall 2.1 percentage, among male 4 percent, almost double, that means almost all the users are male. And uh, here also again, uh, children numbers are again alarming, 1.8 percent of children are using uh, OPID is definitely, it's not a healthy number as far as the uh, healthcare workers are like us are concerned. And among adults, it is 2.1 percent. It's close to adults. Um, you see, opioid use in children, the age between, uh, I, I will highlight, age between 10 to 11 is 1.8 percent. 
18 plus CSR 2.1 percent. So together, these two forms, this four percentage, I tell you, uh, four percentage. Okay, but you see, the it's almost half, you know, close to the equal. The means almost equal to the usage among adults. Usage among adults. So this is not a healthy sign, uh, which needs a lot of focus um, uh, to conduct a lot of IEC uh, school health program to prevent and uh, you know. Uh, prevent this. This is very much preventable to prevent um, uh, drug use or opioid use among children. In opioid, opium, heroin, pharma. Heroin is mostly used. Then pharma opioids. Then comes opium. <coughs> Other drugs in India: cocaine, thirty-three point two lakh uses. Amphetamine, seven lakh uses. As I said, it is emerging now. Hallucinogens, three point four lakh uses. So the three major things are like. Uh, uh, Cannabinoids, opioids, and alcohol. Alcohol is illicit. Other two are Ill illicit. And uh, in illicit, cocaine, amphetamine, and hallucinogens are again uh, uh, less number, but it's emerging. Implications of the survey: 2.9 crore. Uh, the survey of this national survey conducted by AIMS and uh, you know Minister of Social Justice. The implications are 2.9 crore alcohol dependence, 0.8 crore illicit drug dependence. Once again. Sorry for the disturbance. India is one of the world's single largest opioid markets in terms of users and likely to be vulnerable to increase the supply as there are already signs that an intensification of trafficking in opioids originating in Af Afghanistan may be taking place. Because recently there was change in government, there was no elected government, Taliban are losing, using, sorry, ruling. Recently they have announced and ban on opioid uh, cultivation and farming, but how much it is implemented, it's still larger question for other uh, countries in uh, other countries. India has the fourth largest quantities of opium seized in 2020 at 5.2 tons and the third highest amount of morphine was seized from the country the same year at 0.7 tons. About 3.8 tons of heroin was seized in 2020 in India, the fifth highest in the world. According to the National Survey on Extent and Pattern of Substance Use in India in 2019, about 2.1% of the country population was opiates. We have already discussed about it. I move out of this. Now coming to the health consequences of uh, coming to the health consequences of uh, non-medical opioid use. See, after two years of usage of opioid, between 10 to 19, 90% will progress to injecting use. You see, after two years, within two years of usage, 10 to 90% of the people will move to injectable use because the oral drugs when they are using orally will give no more relation so they will move to drug injectable that gives more bioavailability right so almost half of users will develop opioid use disorders and over 20 percent will develop a dependent syndrome over 20 percent of those opioid users will develop dependent syndrome they cannot stay without this drug so they require treatment almost half of users will personally experience non-fatal overdose and many more may witness one in a fellow user. Opioid users may experience other somatic risk for it. For example, opioid induced bowel syndrome, opioid induced hyperalgesia, opioid associated liver fibrosis, opioid related leukoencephalopathy and opioid amnestic syndrome. This is how the opioid is kind of uh, Two-third of drug-related admission is uh, our treatment is related to opioid. So opioid have more health consequences, consequences than their other counterpart drugs. So contracting the risk of contracting hepatitis C is very high. That is within one uh, within one or two further years. After two years, within one to two years, they'll be most of them will be contracting hepatitis C. Already we said at least 10 to 90 percent of them will switch to injectable drug use. Then the probability of fees 50%. We have already seen the data that 50% of the injectables likely to have hepatitis C. 5.5 million have 
uh, out of 11.5 million opioid users, 5.5 million have, have hepatitis C. So the 50% of the injectable drug users will have hepatitis C. Some users will contact HIV. In optimal situation, users will enter treatment at this stage and circle in and out of treatment seeking. So this is what called a revolving door phenomena. At this stage, they will enter and they will feel there is need to take treatment. They will enter to the treatment, get little better, then they will come, they will, they, they will skip for some time, <coughs> they will remain abstinent for some time, again they will start. It is called revolving door phenomena. They will go out of the setting, uh, they, you know, they will not stick to the treatment regimen, they, again they will start the drug, they will come back. That's why we call it as a revolving door phenomena. So commonly it leads to premature death. So cocaine, sorry, opioid use is related to premature death, associated with premature death. One second. Yeah, coming to the health harm of drugs in the context of other psychoactive active substances. So tobacco respect is 8.7 uh, you know, million, alcohol use respect is 2.4 million, it is world number not Indian number, drug use respect is 0.5, alcohol use disorders 0.17 and uh, it is in million, drug use disorders 0.13. Drug use accounts for 5% of all substance related deaths. Years of healthy life lost due to disability and premature death. You all know DALI, okay? Disability uh, associated life year, okay? Uh, so years of healthy life lost due to disability and premature death in 2019 is 230 million, 230 million. Uh, um, alcohol, 93 million. Other drugs, 31 million. Yes. That means it is calculated based on how many people are affected and how many years they have lost due to this. I mean, how many years they have lost by, for example, I just uh, tell the simple calculation. If the life expectancy is 70 years, if someone dies of 40 years due to opioid, that means he has lost 30 years. Okay. For each person, these years are calculated overall. Uh, in 2019, loss of 230 million years due to tobacco, 93 million years due to alcohol, and 131 million years due to drugs. I hope you understand how it is being calculated. Coming to the addressing drug challenges in health and humanitarian crisis, this is exactly our theme for this year. Okay. Health and humanitarian crisis. In 2022, the world continues to witness widespread humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, Ukraine, and elsewhere, while the COVID-19 pandemic is still a major global health crisis. So in last two years, we came across three things. One is, first of all, COVID-19 pandemic, from uh, loss of job to uh, you know loss of education to financial crisis, it posed immense you know, uh, stress on the people. Then also, two, uh, Afghanistan is the country where democratic country was removed and the Taliban took charge, and the Ukraine, which is uh, Russia imposed war on Ukraine. So these are the three major uh, global scenario which led to a lot of you know crisis in uh, worldwide. Health and humanitarian crisis impact people's lives in numerous ways. See, we have to see the interlink between these two. Uh, earlier we talked about drug is linked with the crime, the corruption as well as the you know uh, health related consequences these are interlinked and uh, when it comes to the, uh, stress level and crisis again this may give rise to it may act as a triggering factor so one can start using uh, drugs so we have to see with a sympathy you see the responsibility of us as a uh, healthcare professionals or for the country is to provide care for even those pe people those who are healthy for them, the responsibility from us is to prevent or protect them. And those who are already in drug, it is responsibility of the government or the healthcare workers to provide a care or give a um, uh, to protect them by giving uh, the, uh, the care for whatever the illness they are undergoing. 
we have known for a long time that adverse experiences especially during childhood are linked to increased vulnerability to starting to use drugs and progressing to drug use disorders at the same time these global challenges exacerbate inequalities in the provision of and access to health services education and employment so usually the drug use starts with the experimental use you all know first time anyone uses the drug okay let me try out let me uh, let me see whether this uh, removes or this ease my heart or uh, whether i get some relaxation from my day to day stress by taking this drug so usually with peer pressure or as an uh, you know as a curiosity to experience or an experimental basis people start and they slowly get into this Uh, you know uh, sakra yuga you call it very easy to enter and very difficult to come out of this sakra yuga you can call it is a very complex uh, trap once you enter it is very difficult to come out of it so this includes both services uh, that would be protective of the healthy and safe development of children and youth that is one number two protect the health and promote the recovery of people who use drugs and people with drug use disorders people who see there are two different things try to distinguish between these two one is there are people who use drugs and there are people with the drug use disorder these two are two different things drug use disorder is the person who is diagnosed to have any of the uh, substance use disorder according to icd 11 or dsm okay but the people who use drugs there may be harmful use there may be problematic use there may be simply habitual use so our responsibility to uh, uh, promote a recovery of people who use drugs as well as those who are having drug use disorders the world drug report in 2021 uh, of last year the 2021 showed an increase in the rate of domestic violence against children in particularly linked to the closing of schools and the loss of income of the family that's what i said if one person is alcoholic or having a substance use disorder or drug user the entire family is the victim the family as a unit has to be treated so the person abuse or the domestic violence against children is increased what it happens the children will get you know uh, the children are kind of they are abused and they also it may it may lead to increase in drug use among children its children also so they learn from one is they learn from the parents and also they are abused so that they seek a uh, drug again youth and women were generally hit the hardest by the covid 19 related recession while the pandemic marked the greatest increase in mortality in countries heavily affected by the opioid crisis greater exposure of people who inject drugs to the risk of harm increased mental health problems such as anxiety and depression since then two major humanitarian crises which i already told you afghanistan and ukraine adding thousands to the number of people displaced due to other conflicts and causes in other parts of the world what is the challenge before us it is imperative to sustain the response to drug challenges in the context of these health and humanitarian crises to protect the right to health of the most vulnerable un odc advocates the continuity of services to support children youth families as well as people who use drugs and people with the drug use disorders and has developed tools to support this action in most effective ways the un odc has developed a lot of tools and helping other countries in strategizing and uh, in prevention as well as treatment of these uh, drug uh, users national regional and global collaboration is key to attain the vision of health for all to ensure that psychosocial services are available without disruption in times of crisis strengthening the resilience of children youth families and all individuals in dealing with extreme stress without resorting to negative coping behaviors further services for people who use drugs and people with the drug use disorders need to be included in the list of essential services of the uh, essential services the continuity continuity of which needs to be ensured also in terms of crisis and very importantly counter misinformation most of the people are misinformed about the drug so it is important to counter misinformation so nowadays you know the whatsapp facebook and social media you cannot authenticate any information is right or wrong you have to be again you, you you have to be all all time in the fact finding missions to ensure the information shared to you is right or wrong so that's why the counter misinformation and promote the sharing of facts around drugs which ranges from health risk 
and solution to tackle the world drug problem to evidence based prevention treatment and care data about when where and why people use drugs are key to develop implement and monitor effective responses at the national regional and global levels what can we do from war zones to refugee camps to communicate a tone apart by violence people in all parts of the world are in dire need this year UNODC is addressing transnational drug challenges stemming from situation of crisis. So the UNODC sees that the drug challenges are actually stemming from the situations of crisis. Now, in the last two decades, I think this last two years are the very significant two years in the last couple of decades at least, because before that there was a, even more more problems also. In the last two decades, the last two years were kind of a stressful situation. So that may contribute or trigger more number of substance users. So the UNODC concentrating, UNODC is addressing transnational drug challenges stemming from the situations of crisis. UNODC continue to advocate to protect the right to health for the most vulnerable, including children and youth, people using drugs, people with the drug use disorders, and people who need access to controlled medicines. Do your part. All of you, please take the responsibility as a nurse. Do your part by sharing real facts on the drug situation. From health risks and solutions to tackle, all of you have Facebook, all of you have Twitter accounts, all of you have Instagram. Rather than posting some recently available cosmetics in the market, rather than posting some recently available or updated gadgets in the market, try to share one facts about drugs, which is authenticated. See, it's important. There are a lot of information available in the internet. No one knows what is right or wrong. As a learned person, you know what is the right sources. You know the scientific articles. You know information from right sources like Government of India, WHO, UN, ODC, or AIMS, or many other websites. When you get a right information, don't hesitate. You know, play your role or uh, you know, as a nurse, as a responsible nurse, please share these facts to the public so they are educated. From health risks and solutions to tackle the world drug problem to evidence-based prevention, treatment and care resources in times of crisis. Not only educating them, so just share about the facts of the drug, where its ill effects of, uh, on health, and what are the treatment available. There is a lot of myth about this. They, they seek, in India kind of countries, they, they seek faith healers, and they go to take some Ayurvedic medication. Ayurvedic medication means from unreliable sources. I'm not saying Ayurvedic medication is not good. It is good. But if you take from right sources and uh, qualified people, but they go and take some leaves and uh, every people and uh, in, in present day things, if, if any medicine comes from leaves or uh, natural sources, it is going to be healthy. For them, my message is always clear. Even cocaine is from plant. Even opioid is from plant. What does it do to the health of the human being? So not all the plant medications are good. Opioid is coming from plant and cocaine is coming from plant. So not all that comes from plant is good. So usually they end up losing their kidney like uh, renal failure. All those things happens when they take some medication, Ayurvedic medication from unknown purity and sources. So educate them, make them aware, where is treatment available, what are the centers, National Drug Treatment Center in Delhi like IBAS, there are other mental health setups, district mental health programs, there are mobile health, uh, mental health units. So make them aware that where is where treatment available, where they have to approach, even the, these treatments are given free of cost. So let them know all those things, know the facts, only share information from verified sources like UNODC and you can start now get engaged by sharing the right facts on drugs from our your Twitter I'm sorry your Twitter and Facebook uh, channels or the accounts you can also access and share UNODC social media resources and support in promoting the facts on drugs the way forward I've come, come to the end of the presentation evidence-based treatment needs to be made available for people with substance use disorders National mental health program need to consider setting up a center for treatment and prevention of addiction clinic at every district level and tallic level. Now it is at state level or national level, there are a tertiary care centers, but NMHP should implement this uh, you know, exclusive addiction centers 
in uh, district level and taluk level a conducive legal and policy environment is needed to help control drug problems and get engaged in sharing right facts on drugs with this i finish get engaged in sharing right facts on drugs wherever possible thank you any queries i will be happy to answer thank you uh, dr muthu venkatachalam sir for enlightening the participants regarding the various drugs that are abused and sharing the facts and relevant statistics to highlight the problem i am sure our young listeners now will be well informed and as you have mentioned in your last slides they will be well aware about the drugs abuse and they will help save lives by further creating awareness regarding the same any question from the participant our uh, speaker is happy to have that yes just Anyone? one thing to add here there are a lot of misinformation the common misinformation i would say people say a cup of beer a little bit of beer is healthy a cup of you know uh, an ounce of wine every day will make your skin bloom okay these are some of the very common myths and misinformation and a, 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 a kind of a big of alcohol uh, sorry whiskey per day will keep your heart healthy these are some of the common misinformation which is widespread in our community that leads to actually everyone will start trying that then they will become a habitual user then the harmful user then the problematic user then an addict <laughs> true true sir so now i would like to invite mr navina j h sir secretary nss haryana chapter 4 to propose the vote of thanks for this event uh very good evening everyone thank you uh, ms samandeep ma'am for uh, uh, introducing me and and thank you so much dr muthu venkatachalam srinivasan sir for giving a wonderful session on the uh, topic share drug facts to save the lives so it's an international day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking so as we know that uh, every year the rates uh, of mortality and morbidity due to the drug abuse and uh, due to drug is increasing not decreasing it's not static also so it is one of the alarming uh, uh, situation for everyone and it's a good topic for the youth especially in the, the present uh, situation so i must thank uh, dr muthu venkatachalam sir for taking this uh, session uh, very interactively and also uh, giving us uh, points that we can also uh, utilize and also we can share with our students and with other people so first of all uh, i would like to say thanks to dr sukanna madam uh, as a patron of nursing scholar society uh, for giving an uh, giving us an opportunity to conduct the um, founders day that is on uh, today yesterday and tomorrow we are organizing first year anniversary of nursing scholar society chapter 4 haryana and uh, next i would like to say thanks to dr pinu jo uh, president of uh, nursing scholar society for giving us the platform uh, to organize this event and also to share our uh, joy with us uh, with all a uh, few people so thank you so much sir and uh, next i would like to say thanks to uh mr surendra sharma sir president of nursing scholar society haryana chapter and uh, for giving us an opportunity to conduct this program and also active uh, involvement in uh, carrying all these three days program and i must say thanks to um samandeep kaur madam for hosting today's uh, event on uh, drug abuse share drug packs to save lives international day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking and i must say thanks to all the executive members may, of the nursing scholar society haryana chapter 4 and other uh, students and members of nursing scholar society of all over the country uh, so i just uh, want to say that drugs are the enemies of ambition and hope and when we fight against drug we are fighting for the future so this was given by bob or relay so all of us should follow this one we should not supposed to allow the people to be in the drug addiction try to take out them and give them a bright future so this all this is all our responsibility is being a nursing professionals so i request all of you to join your hands to 
make our country drug free so thank you so much thank you navin sir for the lovely word of thanks and at the end i would like to share a wonderful quote by our father of nation mahatma gandhi ji he said you must be the change you wish to see in the world so and i think it is a appropriate saying for this webinar so if you want to see our world drug free you have to be the one who has to start the change yes and with this we wind up our event and close our webinar thank you once again to everyone for joining with us today and i request all the participants to kindly fill the feedback form which is given in the chat the link is there uh, to get the certificate for this webinar thank you once again thank you sir thank you very thank much you, sir. sir for uh, you. accepting all invitations sir thank you thank you very much sir for wonderful sir thank you I will end the meeting. Yes, sir. I think Navin sir, that is webinar is very uh, informative and special. It will be like time achievement. Okay.